The Metropolitan State Hospital. Built in 1927 and opened in 1929, this hospital served to treat the mentally ill. It was at one point the biggest and most advanced hospital of its kind in the U.S. Since its closing in 1992 due to budget cuts and privatization efforts by the state, what's left of the Met State has been plagued by asbestos and has become the fulcrum of many ghost stories. Although the Metropolitan State Hospital provided aid for many patients for over 60 years, its closing was beneficial to the community because of the hospital's bad reputation and the general shift towards putting the mentally ill in community programs. The Met State's records reflect its major flaws. The following are the annual reports from 1931. 53 resignations, 37 discharges. It is of interest to note that over a period of years, original diagnoses made at the time of commitment would very often prove incorrect. Opening, 86 employees, one employee per 6.6 .6 patients. A year later, one employee per 13.1 patients. And these are from 1987. While 15 new nurses have been hired, Metropolitan State Hospital continues to struggle with retention of its nursing staff, especially mental health workers. Participated in investigations of 40 complaints, these pressing issues with the hospital staff hindered the hospital's ability to serve its patients well and thus sullied its reputation. In addition to these negative reports, there's been some controversy over what is known as the Metfern Cemetery. This cemetery contains the unnamed graves of around 350 ex-patients of the Met State Hospital, as well as the Fernald Center, which is located close by. These graves are marked only with the religion of the ex-patient and a number, and have often been covered by vegetation. The people in these graves are known to be mostly children and adolescents. Currently, people view this treatment of the deceased as inhumane. Groups such as the Danvers State Memorial Committee are pushing to learn the backgrounds of those buried and hold a proper memorial for them. In the worlds of Bill Kapoor, a former patient of the Met State, these people were cheated in life and now they are being cheated in death. However badly these points may harm the hospital's reputation, Met State's most prominent story concerned a murder. In 1978, Anne Marie Davy, a patient of the Met State, disappeared from the hospital. Much later, it was determined that she was murdered by co-patient Melvin Wilson. He dismembered her with a hatchet and buried various parts of her body at different sites of the hospital. Strangely, he kept seven of Davy's teeth, earning the hospital the unflattering nickname of the Hospital of Seven Teeth. An investigation of this incident was not officially made until two years later, and almost 20 reports of negligence by the mental health workers were examined. The woman's death was only publicized almost a full year after her disappearance, after the Senate investigated unexplained deaths at state institutions. The story itself is horrific, but the way that the hospital neglected the event afterwards is perhaps more appalling. More than 165 years ago, Massachusetts led the nation in building a network of public asylums whose spacious outdoor campuses provided fresh air and a serene environment for the mentally ill. With the passage of time, these facilities have become increasingly obsolete. Contributing to their obsolescence were the dramatic changes in psychiatry and the community health programs that have taken place over the past 40 years. Richard A. Hogarty, 1996. The world of mental health treatment was moving on, and the Met State was not. In contrast to institutionalization, community care sought to bring specialist services out of the hospitals and to the people themselves. There was an initial scare when the Met State was closed down due to privatization by the state. Admittedly, the hospital was disorganized in the transition to community care, and not all patients found a home immediately. However, the mass closing of state hospitals was ultimately good for the mental health treatment scene as a whole. The inherent problem with institutionalization is that patients that are deemed unable to function in normal society are placed in isolated care, then are eventually released under the premise that they are quote-unquote cured, then admitted back into the facility again because their time in isolation did nothing to improve their social skills. A vicious cycle. More residential programs and small communities were formed, meaning more patients were able to find homes and treatments. Patients in these new community settings generally found it preferable to the state institutions that they lived in for so long. They were given more human interaction, and their housing felt more like homes. The abandoned Met State building stands today not only as a haunted spot for young people to spread rumors about, but also as a reminder of how mental health treatment has evolved. The hospital was not exactly a failure, it was able to stay functioning for over 60 years, but its closing was appropriate. Its bad 
reputation, along with the push towards community care, warranted the end of the Metropolitan State Hospital.